afternoon. Hello. It's so nice to see you here today. Isn't this a lovely day and a beautiful view? Is there anyone here who's never been up here before? Yeah. You've lived here your whole lives and you've never been up here? Oh my goodness. Ah, well good. Well, good. well my name is Diana Norton. My husband Edward and I reside right back here. Let me tell you a bit about Edward. He was born and raised in Pennsylvania and came to Wheeling in 1847 when he was 35 years old. In Pennsylvania, he had worked as a nail feeder and then as a nailer. So when he came to Wheeling, he joined with his two brothers, George and Fred, with Mr. F.W. Stevens, and they worked at the Top Mill. The Top Mill was located in North Wheeling. <coughs> It had been there for a while, but was under some financial difficulties. And it wasn't long before Mr. Stevens had to bring in some additional partners. And Edward did not like that at all. So he left and started his own mill and called it the Virginia Mill. It was located about where your civic arena is now. Well, he worked there for a couple of years and then started another company. It was called Norton and Bailey and Company. He was in charge of sales. He also oversaw the finances and also did mechanical work in the mill itself. Quite a busy person. It wasn't long after that that some of his partners split off and formed Bailey Woodward and Company and that branch eventually became LaBelle Nail. Well, tensions were quite uneasy at that time in Wheeling. It looked like there might be war. The South was talking about leaving the Union, and of course, Edward strongly supported the Union. He joined with two other prominent men in Wheeling. They were Alfred Caldwell, who had been a mayor of Wheeling, and you'll meet his wife a little later. And the other was Archibald Campbell, who was the editor of the Wheeling Intelligencer. <coughs> they published pamphlets supporting the North and urging the rest of Wheeling to support the North. They pointed out, for example, that Wheeling was a northern city. After all, it was about the same latitude as Philadelphia. Most people in Wheeling did support the Union. <coughs> But there were others that did not, and of course, many, many in the main part of Virginia supported the South. And the population as a whole voted to secede from the Union in April of 1861. Things got very uneasy then. Here we were, a northern industrial city, the terminus of the East-West B&O Railroad, on the banks of a major north-south waterway in the very edge of Virginia. We thought sure that we would be attacked. Well, we weren't, but we were able to keep track of what was going on in the rest of the country. I'll never forget the day that we read in the Intelligencer about the battle between two ironclad ships, the Monitor and the Merrimack. Ah, the technology of today. They put iron on the sides of the ships and those cannonballs just bounced right off. Well, you could see the wheels turning in Edward's brain. He immediately joined with his brothers, leased the top mill again, and began manufacturing inch-thick iron plate for the Union Navy. Well, in addition to saving countless ships and, and lives of sailors, that also became quite profitable. Well, Edward was busy in other ways at the same time. He and his friends, Mayor Caldwell and Editor Campbell, were, had been the three men who represented Ohio County at the convention in Chicago that nominated Abraham Lincoln for President of the United States. And so as his reward, Edward was appointed the U.S. Marshal for this area. One of the first things he did was to write a letter to the United States Attorney General to get clarification
information on an act that Congress had just passed called the Confiscation Act. It basically said that Edward was allowed to confiscate the property of Confederates. And Edward wanted to make sure that he understood exactly how far he could go. I can still remember reading that letter before he sent it. His first sentence was, we are surrounded here by traitors. Well, the response must have been good because Edward immediately began to enthusiastically enforce the Confiscation Act. For example, there was an attorney named Charles Wells Russell. He was one of the most prominent attorneys in Wheeling. You may recall that when the suspension bridge was built, Pittsburgh sued to have it torn down because they were afraid that it would impede the riverboat traffic going upstream to Pittsburgh. And the case went all the way to the United States Supreme Court. And Charles Wells Russell was one of the attorneys that defended our bridge. He was also one of the men who was responsible for bringing the B&O Railroad here to Wheeling. So a very prominent man, but he had left to go to Richmond to join the Confederate legislature. So first Edward took his two bay horses, beautiful animals, and then he confiscated his house. It was located at number 75 12th Street, and you know that house still stands today. It became the headquarters for General William Rosecrans when Rosecrans was assigned to Wheeling. Then Edward confiscated the house that belonged to Dr. Matthew Houston. He was one of the founders of Wheeling Hospital, but he had left to become a surgeon in the Confederate Army. So, his house was taken. Then there was the case of Ellie Poole. Now, Ellie Poole was an East Wheeling school teacher, and believe it or not, she was charged with espionage. I will say that after the war, there were 128 volumes written on the official records of the war. And Ellie is named by name and labeled a shrewd and dangerous spy. So Edward arrested her. Oh, that Ellie, she was shrewd all right. She said, oh, I don't feel well. Can't I just stay in my house under house arrest? instead of putting me in prison, and he let her stay. And that very night, she escaped. <laughs> oh, was Edward mad? Well, she had quite a few adventures after that, but that's a story for another day. <laughs> well, after the war, Edward stayed in the iron business until eventually he retired and we lived on a farm. We stayed together past our 50th wedding anniversary. A few months after that, Edward passed away, and then shortly after that, I joined him right here. But it is so nice that you came to visit us today, and I do hope you'll come back. Thank you.